Well, the Trump trial kicked off today with a hearing on whether he violated his gag order. And that, that's like that's like me holding a hearing on whether my cat violated our new curtains last night. Like we all already know that not only did he do it, he don't feel even a little bit bad. He will do it again. And in fact, he is outraged that we have the audacity to expect him not to do it. Trump's like my cat. Also, I continue to marvel at the insane job of being Donald Trump's attorney. Like his lawyer's in there in court with a straight face, just like your honor. My client tried very diligently to obey this court's gag order. And the prosecution's like, Your Honor, we submit a BuzzFeed article entitled 10 times that Donald Trump disobeyed this court's gag order. Uh, what do you do? Being his attorney is an impossible job, the reward for which is being publicly humiliated, stiffed on the bill, ultimately fired, and in some cases, literally imprisoned. Where does he find these people? Either way, then they got back to the meat of the case, which was testimony from David Pecker, who used to run National Enquirer. I do think it's a little simulation-y that a guy who made a career out of screwing the truth has the last name Pecker. It's like, Jesus, what was the COO's name? Billy Bullshitter? Come on, man. Anyway, according to Pecker, in the run-up to the 2016 election, Trump's team had a backdoor arrangement with the Enquirer to bury bad stories about him and run bad stories about his opponents. And this did shock me only because I did not realize the National Enquirer dealt in things like actual stories that may have happened in reality. I didn't know they did that. You mean to tell me when you're standing in line at the checkout waiting on the mamma in front of you to get her coupon sorted and a headline catches your eye that says something like, Elon's battle for custody of hybrid monkey robot child turns nasty. You mean that publication is a legit political power broker? This country is absurd, man. Also, the whole thing felt kind of pointless to me from Trump's part. You don't need to cover up Trump's indiscretions. His base loves his indiscretions. We all know it, no matter how scandalous of a thing you put out about Trump, you're still going to have MAGA Christian conservatives going, look how he stands up and perseveres in the face of his own myriad infidelities. Such a righteous and just man is he, you know. Some of them even say that these harlots pissed in his mouth and still he stands tall. Can I get a praise the Lord? Amen. Right? That's how they are. You know, I do think it's kind of funny that it's kind of poetic that while he was out there in public popularizing the concept of fake news, at the same time, behind closed doors, he had a dedicated fake news team making fake news agreements with big fake news in an effort to fake as much news as possible. I just feel like that kind of sums him up, you know. And I do think we all need to remember we are watching an actual criminal court case about an actual soon to be president engaging with the most salacious tabloid rag in this country to illicitly influence the upcoming presidential election by covering up his scandals and slanderizing his opponents and yet fully half of this country thinks it's a big waste of time that ain't even worth talking about y'all it wasn't that long ago that howard dean was deemed unfit for the white house because he got overly excited and yelled a dumb sound what has happened to this country man all right, YouTube, I got something better or something uh, more fun or more exciting for me I want to talk about in a little bit. But first, I want to dive in on uh, how the media is covering this here story. Check it out. All right, y'all, we're here on Ground News' website, this video sponsor, and you can see what they've done. They've aggregated all the stories about this particular article about the judge telling Trump's lawyer today that he is, quote, losing all credibility. And you can see here what you can do. You can sort these stories by the bias of the outlet writing about it, and you can compare the headlines and how different they are. Like if I sort by right here, you can see the right-leaning outlets. They say Trump judge fumes. They say he audaciously accuses Trump's lawyer. It's a lot more charged and judgmental wording. But then on the left, you know, I mean, on the left, they say the judge repeatedly bench slaps Donald Trump. So maybe not the most journalistic approach there either. But either way, you can see how the narratives from either side are present before you ever even click on the article. And that's just some of the information you can glean from Ground News. Ground News is a startup and service that aims to combat bias in the media by adding context and transparency to all the news that you consume. And you can try it now by clicking on the link in the description below. More info on that in a second. But let me tell you some more about what Ground News can do. You can see here they got a bias distribution. You can see uh, what percentage of biases are present in the coverage of this particular story, which leads me to my favorite feature. They have the blind spot feature. The blind spot feature shows you stories that are not currently being covered on one or the other side of the political spectrum. So you can see outside your bubble for a second and get some insight into what they are or are not talking about and why. It's just one of the things that makes Ground News such a good service. 
All right, so like I said, if you like that, you can click the link in the description below to try Ground News now for free, or you can get 40% off their highest tiered Vantage program. Either way, it's 2024, y'all. It's an election year. It's never been more important to combat the bias and the BS in the media. Try Ground News today. All right, YouTube, and we're back. Listen, y'all ain't gonna believe this. Sit down, buckle up, do whatever, because I got something for you. It's good news. What that don't never happen around these parts, right? No, I can't believe it myself, but not only is it good news, there's two pieces of it, and most unbelievable, uh, inconceivable of all, both pieces of good news originate from none other than my home state of Tennessee. What? As I live and breathe, be still my heart. Tennessee has managed to not do the most dumb and awful thing imaginable for once. I mean, what to be fair, in one of these cases, they tried very, 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 very hard to do the most dumb and awful thing imaginable and imaginable, and only failed by virtue of their own incompetence. But still, we take those. We count those. I'm still thrilled. I'm over to, I can't remember the last time I had a reason to be happy about a politics story from Tennessee. It probably involves Al Gore. That's how long it's been. So I'll take that shit. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Here's what happened. It is uh, the much maligned by people whose brains work Tennessee school voucher program, the flagship legislation of Tennessee governor and asshole in chief Bill Lee has been officially deemed dead in the water for at least this year. That's right. Public schools remain viable in Tennessee. It's insane to me that that was ever in doubt, but I guess it was. Now, how did this happen? I'm still a little confused myself. Normally, how it goes in Tennessee is the insane boogity boogity conservative overlords in power there. They go to places like my hometown in rural Tennessee and they demand people get down on their knees and allow them to shove as much shit down their throat as possible legislative, legislatively and then ask them to thank them for the pleasure. And generally speaking, they're happy to oblige. But this time, somehow, they decided to push back. Here's my theory on it. I think, I've been thinking this the whole time. I think that a lot of these, these crazy-ass MAGA types, but they still represent counties like mine, Clay County, they heard like, wait a minute, so this is going to replace public schools? So, where the school gonna be? And they're like, oh, it's all right. No, you use these vouchers to go to private school. And they're like, what the fuck is a private school? Where y'all know where the nearest private school is? Ain't a private school. I don't even like them Jesus schools a hundred years, hundred miles away. You know, it's like we only got the one damn school. You know, and it's just, he's like, yeah, but you don't even want that school. Public, they're bad now. See, because see, those that's a woke indoctrination center. And they, even these lunatics are like, Clay County High School is a woke indoctrination. Are you sure about that? The principal is Miss Eva Nell Dulworth. She's been the organist at the Church of Christ for 50 years. She's indoctrinating kids into wokeness. Like, yeah, sorry to tell you. And they actually didn't buy the bullshit for once. I still can't believe that it happened. But again, I will take it. The other thing, the other big, big item of good news coming from Tennessee this week that I can scarcely believe is the United Auto Workers successfully unionized a massive Volkswagen plant in Chattanooga. I've got friends, good friends who worked there for years. So I know this fight's been ongoing for a very long time. And frankly, I had never really thought they'd pull it off. So I'm uh, over the moon that this has happened. If you watch the footage of the auto workers celebrating this win in Tennessee, it's such a beautiful multiracial coalition of real working people, exactly the type of thing that terrifies, strikes fear into the heart of the plutocracy and the powers that be. And that's why it moves me and swells my heart so thrilled to be able to share some actual good news with y'all. And I'm even, I'm doubly thrilled about its provenance. Go Vols, baby. That's what's up. Listen, YouTube, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. I'm going to put some things up here on the screen. This is my special damn boy. If you ain't seen it yet, what are you waiting for? Check it out. It's fun. One of these circles down here is to subscribe to the channel. You get all these silly videos and my podcast and stuff. It's a good time, too. But the most important one to me, this other circle, that's TreyCrowder.com. That's my website where you can see tour dates. I'm really a stand-up comedian. Come see me do a full hour of stand-up. It's very fun. If I'm coming near you, come see me. I promise you'll dig it. But most importantly... Y'all keep watching these missives here and I'll keep making them. I love you like chicken. See you. Bye.